Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. The ten northern tribes have gone into captivity. Jeremiah has begun his ministry in the 13th year of Josiah. He is a good king and the last good king in Judah. He is also the king that they found the law written that was hidden, ironically. Isaiah has been dead for about 60 years. You would find contemporaries with Jeremiah, Zephaniah, Habakkuk. Daniel will tell us about Jeremiah. Jeremiah is 52 chapters. Three, uh, four times 13. 52 cards in a deck. Jeremiah means God will cast out. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests. Jeremiah is a priest of Levi. But he's a prophet. That were of Antioch. And that's important. We'll see later on. His hometown will want, uh, would want Jeremiah dead. In the land of Benjamin. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, <clears throat> the son of Amon, king of Judah. In the thirteenth year of his reign, thirteen number of rebellion, it came to pass in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. That's when Jerusalem taken away by Babylon. <coughs> Jeremiah, we will see Jerusalem conquered and carried away. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, not evolution, I knew thee, for knowledge of God. Before thou camest forth of the womb, I sanctify thee. That means to set apart for God's purpose. I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Ordain. There's no service. There's no assembly of men for the ordaining of Jeremiah. They didn't call pastors and preachers for the assembly of Jeremiah. No one liked Jeremiah. You're going to find that Jeremiah has one good friend, Baruch, and then an Ethiopian eunuch, maybe. That's it. Unto the nations, Judah, Babylon, and other areas Jeremiah will speak to. Then said I, O oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak like Moses. Moses, uh, Lord, I'm not elegant. I, a foolish man into the ministry. Oh, God called me and I got up and spoke right away. And, you know, you know everybody's got to hear me and I'm important to say, oh, no, 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 no. I would say, God, you know, I don't want the responsibility. <laughs> Who am I? For I am a child. You know, I don't know how old Jeremiah is. And if I looked up the commentaries, you know, they would say, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. But the Lord said unto me. See, I care what the Bible says, not what man says. I care what the Word of God says, not tradition. God will tell us birthday if He wants us to know birthday. God will tell us how old if God wants us to know how old. 
Say not, I am a child. For God heard what he said. For thou shalt go to all that I send thee. Jeremiah is going to go all the way up to Babylon. John, Jeremiah is going to go all the way to a prison house. Whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Inspiration. I'm going to tell you to do something. You're going to do it, Jeremiah. Be not afraid of their faces. Jeremiah, you know what kind of ministry you have? You're going to be preaching and teaching these people, and their faces are going to be like, going to be a sour note. Remember, some of these people he's going to be talking to is his own hometown. Jesus' own town wanted him dead, wanted him gone. I guarantee the ministry of Jeremiah and Jesus, there was not happy faces. I've got that ministry too. Of the world, of the family, of Christians and pastors. I am. There that is. With thee to deliver thee. <laughs> Isn't that remarkable? All right, Jeremiah in the ministry. I'm going to have to deliver you. Oh, great. This is going to be a great ministry. Deliver me from what? Well, one thing, their faces. Don't be afraid of them. And what God's telling Jeremiah, uh, you're not going to be liked. And any preacher, any Christian that's loved by the world and upheld by the world, you're not a minister, you're not a Christian. You're not Christ-like. They hated Jesus, they hated the disciples, they hated the apostles, they hated their early Christians. Marvel not, my, my brethren, the world hates you. Know that it hated me, Jesus said first. So, Jeremiah's already on a rough start with God telling him about his ministry. Very on a rough start. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Inspiration. Oh, man wrote the Bible. Yeah, there it is. Jeremiah wrote the Bible at the words of what God told him to do and say. That's what separates him from the false prophets. God don't speak to false prophets. See? So there's something of Jeremiah that God says, see? I have this day set thee over the nations again. So he's not just a prophet to Judah. Over kingdoms plural, to root out, uplift, take out, no more roots, to pull down, destruction, to destroy, to throw down, destruction, destruction, to build, and to plant. And you'll find that in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. There's a time to plant. There's a time to pull up. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time. There's a time. Look how much of Jeremiah's message is negative. And two parts. Build and plant is, destruction, uh, is good. Positive. The Roman Catholic Church will apply verse 10 to their Pope. The Pope has the power to root up, to pull down. To, that's nonsense. Judgment is coming. You better tell him, Jeremiah. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? He said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Numbers 
17 8. Aaron's rod was an almond tree that budded. See Moses? You see Aaron? In the family of Jeremiah the priest? You see the past historical events of the Jewish history? Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time. What seest thou? He says, I see a seething pot for cooking. And the face thereof is toward the north. That's Babylon. The Lord said unto me, Out of the north, and evil shall break forth. Babylon come upon all the inhabitants of the land of Judah, Jerusalem. Judgment's coming. And it's coming on the people of Israel. I mean Judah. From God, by God, his people. And lo, I will call for families of the kingdoms of the north. That'll be Babylon, saith the Lord. And they shall come, and they shall set everyone his throne at the entering of the gate of Jerusalem. There goes the Jewish throne. And against the walls thereof round about. And against the cities of Judah. Listen, Isaiah has been warning them. But they didn't listen to Isaiah. They're not going to listen to Jeremiah. Judgment and the armies are coming. I will utter my judgment. You say, what's COVID-19? What are the hurricanes? What are the fires? What are the earthquakes? What is the volcano? I've seen this year two volcanoes erupt. By missionaries and men on, on my Facebook post. I didn't see anything on, in the news. God's judgment. No one's listening. The churches are not listening. They're getting worse and worse carnal. It, it, it's funny that in the church, adults have to now act like kids for fun. Judgment against them. Touching all the wickedness, their wickedness, all the sins of Judah, all the sins of Israel is already passed on. They're in captivity. And Jeremiah is going to name those sins, and Isaiah named those sins, and God's going to pass judgment because they never repented of them sins. They never gotten right. They're going to get worse. Not only the sins of Jeremiah 60 years ago. And not only the sins we see in Jeremiah. But they're going to get even worse. In Jeremiah. And in Jeremiah they're just going to outright like Isaiah. Reject God and go about their own way. And in the book of Judges. Every man did that which is right. In his own eyes. Who have forsaken me, God, and have burned incense unto other gods. And we saw that countless times in Isaiah 60 years ago, if not more. And worship the works of their own hand. Images, idolatry. Thou therefore gooder thy loins. Arise. Speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces again. Least I confound thee before. Listen, Jeremiah, you better write. You better do right. You better get right. You better say right. You better have the activity right. Your mouth better be right. Or I'm going to put you in shame before them. And there are going to be times you think Jeremiah, well, maybe he did wrong. You know, he, no. 
It's not God putting them to shame. It's not God that put him in prison. It's the people. For behold, You know, it would be something in the book of Acts, there was a husband and wife that lied against the Holy Spirit, and they died right there in the church assembly. You know, that would be something if that still happened today. That would weed out the falseness of the church. And that's why the church is so deceptive today. That's why we got Baptist Catholic, because they're not dying in the pulpit. They're not dying in the church grounds. And when they carry their heresies and their Pharisees and their and their their carnality, they're not dying. Matter of fact, in some cases, it looks like they're prospering. And yet the book of Psalms says, fret not, because true judging hasn't come. It'll be weighed out the judgment seat of Christ for the save and for the great white throne judgment for the law. Can you imagine if you got a pastor of your church? Who's lied to you is deceived, and you see him at the great white throne judgment, or your Christian friend that sat across the pew from you. How about seeing your pastor, your Christian friend in your church, your deacon? How about you see them at the judgment seat of Christ? And when their works are burned, they have no, nothing. All they have is ashes. No gold, no rewards, no crowns, no inheritance. And how many people follow that person? How many people follow those people? End up either judgment. And how about those Christians that get nothing, absolutely nothing. And the ones they teased and the ones they fought against and the ones they hated and the ones they thought were screwball, they come out of the judgment seat of Christ, they got one crown. They got one piece of gold. And they get a little tiny town inheritance. That's what faith is. And we're going to see America in Jeremiah. And we're going to see a, a failure in America in the failure of the churches in Jeremiah. That history will repeat itself. But, you know, many Christians, we don't read the Old Testament. I'm going to show you places in Jeremiah that have been skipped by churches. You better be faithful, confound before thee. What's that count, co confound before thee? What is the New Testament relevant for the Christian in the church? Eh? You better study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Peter was put to shame by Paul. And Paul had to rebuke Peter. Before all. For behold. By the way, at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, after the judgment, you can repent all you want. You can't get it right no more. If your head is naked or you're off to the lake of fire that burns forever, you can't change that. And everybody else you led. For behold, I have made thee, Jeremiah, this day a defense city. Jeremiah is a city. Jerusalem is in complete abomination. If there's any man in the Bible who can say, I am a city on the light of the hill, uh, Jeremiah, right there, there it is. Christians run around, oh, I am the light of the world and the city that shine, and your battery's been dead for years. Jeremiah is a spokesman to 
a nation that is abhorred by God as America and the world is today. Jeremiah is literally one man against all the people besides Baruch and uh, the Ethiopian. And an iron pillar, strength, and, uh, and usually iron has a bad condensation in the body, but not for Jeremiah. And brazen walls, brass in the Bible symbols judgment. When the walls of Jeremiah, I mean, when the walls of Jerusalem will come down and the temple is destroyed, Babylon is going to go into a jail cell and they're going to pull out an iron pillar and a brazen wall and say, Jeremiah, you did a good job. And you realize when we get to that place that the Babylonian captain is going to say, Jeremiah, this all happened because of the sins of Judah. What is he doing? Is he rebuking Jeremiah? No, he's not rebuking Jeremiah. He's saying, Jeremiah, everything that you said and everything that you did was correct. And guess what? They're not here no more. Now, Jeremiah, if you like, there's uh, I use the, there's some grapes over there. There's some figs over there. There's some raisins over. There. Go get yourself a good meal. And I'll tell you what. If you like, you want to come to Babylon. I'll put you on my ass. I'll put you on my camel. I'll take you to Babylon. If you want to stay here in, in the city, uh, you stay here in the city. But and give him some money. Give him some money. Pay the prophet. And if your church don't support you and you're doing right today and your church don't support you and the Christians don't support you and your pastor don't support you, like where I stand, God's going to say, pay that man of God gold, silver, precious stone, a crown, an inheritance. And then Christian, you look at your church, you look at your pastor, you look at, they may not have nothing like the destruction of, in Jeremiah's time. I love the book of Jeremiah. Because it's true. The iron pillar holds things up. A brazen wall. No one's going to break that. The, the children of Judah. Are not going to break Jeremiah down. Against the whole land. That's a type of Jesus Christ. There'll be far more people crushed by the horse of Jesus than there'll be the Jews that we pick up in the sheep nations. And I'm reminded of the Pharisee and the lies that are being taught about the second advent of Jesus Christ. We'll see the lies and all that in Jeremiah. Jesus Christ is so against the land of Judah and Jerusalem, he's going to redo it. Against the king of Judah. Zedekiah. And against the princes thereof, they'll, they'll die or go into Babylon. Against the priests, that's Jeremiah's own outfit. The temple's torn down, destroyed. And against the people of the land, that's the Jews, God's people. Don't you think just because I'm a Christian and nothing's going to happen to me, you are a liar. You are in pride. You have sinned. They shall fight against thee. Uh, now, what do you think about Jeremiah? Oh, wait a minute, Lord. You know the worst wor other words in Jeremiah that would ever be would, would be the Joshua. Moses walks up to Joshua, puts his arm around him, says, Joshua, yes, sir, I'm going to die. Oh, man. That is... That wasn't your fault. That still, God said, I'm going to die. And we know how bad Israel is. Yeah. You and I, 
you're going to lead the people in Israel. Uh, what? I got them? <laughs> Remember, Joshua seen it all. Joshua seen all the griping and complaining and arguing. And even in Joshua's time, the people did not get the full victory that God wanted them to do. He said, Jeremiah, they're going to be against me. You know, I've got the devil against me. I've got family against me. i got the world against me. I've got churches against me. I've got Christians against me. i got pastors against me. And all i got to say to them is, tough. I'm going to serve, serve the Lord and do right. That's Jeremiah's attitude. But when we get to the middle of Jeremiah, he's going to find, a, you know, he's going to be, I ain't, I'm, I'm done. I ain't speaking the word of God. I ain't, I've had to pass it. You know, you're foolish to want to give up and all that. And Jeremiah did. Job did. Elijah did. Peter did. What do you mean telling me that I, I'm getting thoughts and all that, giving up with men? I'm with good men in the Bible. You must not be studying the Bible. Even Jesus told the Father, and not about death, but about sin. Lord, if it be thy will, but if I can let this cup pass, if I can die without the sins, oh, okay, nevertheless, thy will be done. They shall not prevail against you. They're not going to win. You will. For I am, there's the I am again, with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Oh, oh I understand the deliverance again, verse 8. I got everybody who's going to be against me. So from chapter 1 of the beginning of the call of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, they're not going to love you. They're going to try to kill you. They're trying to prison you. They're going to try to change your message. They're going to ridicule you. They're going to be against you, but you just relax. I am God. I'm with you, and I'll take care of you. If there's ever a man that lived by faith in the Bible, it's Jeremiah for 50, I think, 51 chapters, trying to do a little math here, 51 chapters, Jeremiah lives by faith of what God told him in the first chapter. What keeps me strong? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. I will never leave thee for safety. And... All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Have I not? Ha, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? All those are comforting words to me. Proverbs chapter 1 is comfor comforting words to me because you know what? They say, hey, your ministry ain't going to be happy-go-lucky, wonderful, great, and all that. If your ministry is happy-go-lucky and great and everybody loves you, everybody, you're doing something wrong. I don't have a puffy, carnal ministry. Others do. But I know what their end's going to be, a sad one.